Hey guys, welcome back. I just wanted to go over a couple of things that I've got going on here with my new enclosure. I've got it all wired up, and I've got, I'm just testing it out, running it through the paces. Um, so, the, the enclosure I bought is from Amazon. It was fulfilled by um, Automation Technologies or something like that. Um, it's a good case. It's a nice case. The only thing that I would, that I would uh, be aware of is that they do supply a couple of connections for you to uh to hook into your g540 it comes with the ac outlet it comes with the fuse it comes with the iec connector it doesn't include the cable so you have to get an iec cable um, it has a provision for an 80 millimeter fan my fan is 60 millimeter i got the uh, vampire ventilation kit with the heat sinks and thermal switch from e dealers direct um, that was a nice little purchase the it comes with a db9 but it doesn't come with steak guns or whatever you want to call them uh standoffs what have you it doesn't come with these i had to pilfer those off of an old desktop computer and then get some 440 nuts from lowe's but it all went together pretty well i uh, have it all soldered in the db9 is feeding my home switches and it's feeding all of my probe signals my probe signals come in and they go to this relay right here and the reason why i have a relay is because i've got the tool setter and i've got the probe from crafty cnc and you can't wire them in series because the cable or the yeah the cable for the probe once you disconnect the probe, you now, have an, now you now have an open signal, which will mess up your digitized function. So what I did was I, out, I wired in my, my output to this relay, and now I can switch between the two units. I can switch between the tool setter, which runs the normal, uh, the normal close signal, which is the constant signal, and then when I need the probe, I switch over to the normal open side of the of the relay, and it will work both of them. Well, not at the same time, but it'll work them independently. And I'll show you that. So let me fire this up. It is a little it is a little loud. So let me get this fired up. Okay, so take baby out of e stop. So right now, right now the touch setter is or the the tool setter is set up so now if i if i lightly press on it you'll see digitize pop up if i hammer down on it it triggers emergency stop so there's a two-stage switch inside of the unit it's a very nice unit for what i paid for there's like 70 bucks off of ebay so anyway so right now the machine's set up for a tool setter when I want to use the probe, if I try to digitize off the probe, I'm not getting a signal, and you can see I'm touching it right here. No so good. So what I have is I have two VB scripts. If I open up my VB scripts and I go down to... I have them registered as M460 and M461. It doesn't really matter what they are as long as they aren't system-assigned M codes. I wanted to use 46 and 47 for uh, commonality with the machines that I that I uh, work on in my day-to-day -day life, but that didn't work out too well. So I had to use M460, M461, and the script is easy. Just deactivate signal and activate signal. You tell it which output you want to activate or deactivate. Give it a quick little sleepy, and that's all you need. And then from there, if we go into our... MDI command, or I can run from this MDI command line here. If I go M461, you can't hear it. Well, you may not hear it, but right now, if I try to lightly touch, you can see I'm lightly touching, I'm not getting a digitized signal. If I touch the probe, you can see I'm getting a digitized signal. Now, same thing. If I go M460, M460, you'll hear the relay disable, so now when I hit the probe, probe does not work, and if I trigger tool setter, tool setter now works again. So now, the, 
So now the uh, the trick is the trick is M four sixty one. Enable it, then run your probing routine. So you either have to pre-stage the M four sixty or you have to build it into the macros that you're running for your probing routines, which is okay, which is fine. Um, the other thing that the because Mach is uh, controlling the output whenever you hit reset. It turns the relay off and now you're back into tool setter mode. So if you turn the machine off or if you have a power failure or something like that in the middle of a probing routine, you will disable the output and the tool setter will be back to the default, which is good because when I'm running the machine, I put in, let me turn this back off. I put in a muscle chuck and the muscle chuck is gonna make it so that I just use this little T-handle Allen wrench put my tools in, take my tools out. And then every time I call up an M6 command, a tool change command, the M6 is tied in to come over and touch off the tool setter. So every single time I change a tool, it will touch off on the tool setter and then it can go and run the rest of the program. So I think that's pretty, uh, I think that's pretty slick. It, it eliminates uh, touch plates and, and things like that. I, I didn't really like that whole touch plate thing with the alligator clip grounding out to the to the router bit and all that stuff. So this is what I'm used to. This is what I use in my day to day. Um, not this exact unit, but something similar. So that's what I wanted to stick with. I wanted to stick with a hard mounted automatic tool link measurement system, and I wanted to use a hardwired probing system. And I've got that all tied into this single pole double throw 48 volt relay. The other relay is my spindle controller. So now I can throw M3, M5. I can get my router spindle to start up and everything is working very well. So I'm happy with this setup. Um, if anybody has any questions as to what's going on with that second relay, Feel free to ask me. It's just uh, just a standard, like I said, 48 volt, single pole, double throw. I can get you a part number if you guys need it to switch between the two probes. It was the uh, best solution I could think of. Prior to that, I was using this little toggle switch, but then I said, well, while I'm putting together a new control box, screw it. I'll throw in a relay and I'll just double, I'll trigger off the second output because I don't have to worry about coolant pump or anything like that and even if i did i could probably just bounce off of the bounce off the one relay to, to trigger that and figure out some fancy wiring or whatever um but yeah that's pretty much it oh and and if you're wondering about dust collection why i'm not triggering off my dust collector i have uh somewhere around here i have a remote control for my dust collection unit so i wasn't worried about it I wanted I wanted this functionality more than I wanted to automatically trigger my dust collector. I got no problem with hitting the on button on the remote control. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if anybody has any questions, just let me know. And I'll see you again soon.